Thank you, Nigel. Well, welcome everybody tonight. It's great to see so many families joining us. But before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that our school is built on Gadigal land of the, of the Eora Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to all Aboriginal people, past, present and emerging. So thank you so much for being here tonight. This is the next part of our journey with our stage five curriculum. And what's really important about this evening is that we're going to unpack a little bit around our mathematics pathways. And I have to say, if I could just get you, Nigel, to move to the next slide, is that we are focusing on mathematics tonight, but if you'd like to, at the end, ask any more questions you can in relation to the elective options as well. But I think it's important to stress that unlike the other courses, mathematics is the only stage five course that has the separate pathways available. And if we'd like to move to the next slide, you'll be able to see here that we can see English, geography, history, mathematics, personal development, health and physical education and science. So they are our core courses, but mathematics is the only one that has the different pathways within. So when parents have actually asked about extension, well, that occurs within each of those other subject areas. But it's important to note that mathematics is the only one with these different pathways. And that's exactly why we are focusing on mathematics tonight. Now you can see there the ticks already. Everyone has been so responsive and so positive. And with all the questions um, that you've actually been asking, I think Ms. Kelso can provide perhaps some information later, but we have about two thirds of our um, students that have actually contributed already to their elective courses for stage five, which is absolutely fantastic. So what's important about tonight too, is the fact that we actually have some fantastic um, expertise here. So we have Nigel Kwan, who is Head Teacher of Science and Mathematics, but we also have Stuart Palmer. Now, Stuart Palmer is a member of our mathematics faculty, but he brings to um, our team, he's a great mentor, he's a mathematics cons consultant, he's an expert in the field, and he's also written the textbooks that our students actually use. So um, Stuart's been able to bring that, um, that knowledge to the teachers here at Inner Sydney High School. And I also have to say too, it's great to see that our mathematics faculty are actually listening here tonight as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Nigel, who's going to start the presentation. Over to you, Nigel. Thanks, Robin, and thank you for that introduction. Um, Stuart is here with me, and I might throw to him or he may interject as we talk about the various stage five um, mathematics pathways. Um, so we'll get started with that now. So in a nutshell, um, we, we were driven at the school to around this question of, you know, what is best for our students? And within the mathematics faculty, um, we've decided to do a few things or two real main things to really get to what is best for our students. And th this is what uh, the emphasis of tonight will be about. So um, here's my analogous nutshell. So we are about supporting the journey, uh, students' journeys in mathematics with high expectations. And hopefully you'll see what I mean as, as I continue on with that. And really importantly, keeping the door open to all future pathways. So it, has, it actually is a step in, um, in the journey that is quite an important step because it does have an impact into the places that students can go, stage five mathematics. And I wanna unpack that a little bit with you tonight and how we've tried to ensure that the pathways stay open for as long as possible. So really excitingly at our um, school, as many of you have been on this journey with us, we have a really great opportunity because we're in the right place and the right time with the right people, really importantly, importantly, to do the right thing for our students. And for those of you who've heard me speak before, you know that I love a good analogy. And the one that I wanna to present to you today is this idea of tailor-making um, the right fit for our students in terms of their mathematics journey going into um, stage five. So here is the first step in my analogy of this, um, this tailor-making. So I've got a, a student here um, with an ill-fitting suit. And going into this, we had a few things we definitely didn't want to do. And there were there are three key things that kind of all impact e each other. And the talk tonight is structured around how we've um, built what we've built for the students in this, um, in this structure to ensure it's tailor-made. Tailor so um, the three things are, you know, misinterpreting the intention of the syllabus structure. So I'll explain with you guys what 5.1, what 5.2, what 5.3 is, and we don't want to misinterpret that. 
Um, putting kids into three streams um, based on this 5.1, 5.2 and 5.3 structure. And that's quite an arbitrary thing that is often happens. And another thing that we wanted to steer clear with was this idea of doing it without consultation. Hence us talking to you tonight and continuing that conversation on later. Just really quickly, this idea of putting kids into three streams, I want to make sure we're, we're very clear as we go through this, you know, this is analogous to lining up, you know, all of our 150-ish students in a line decided by a test or um, a teacher's thoughts on how good the students are. And then quite arbitrarily just going down the line and cutting off at a quite arbitrary number, which is 30 because it's the class size and saying, yep, 30, one class, 30, the next class, all the way down. So we don't want to, we do not want to just do that arbitrary streaming. Um, and what we're going to present to you unpacks a little bit more of the thoughtful process behind it. And again, importantly, this idea of not locking students out of pathways and keeping the door open and specifically around STEM, for those of you who don't know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics and STEM related pathways. So keeping the door open for these things is something that we do have to consider in stage five and something that I'm um, keen to talk to you about tonight. So the first thing that we're going to focus on is this misinterpretation of the syllabus, or in our case, trying to unpack what the intention of the syllabus means for our community, for those of you who are watching. So mathematics from K to 12, as you can see on the, on, on the left here, it, it does stretch all the way through and, and the students listening and you, you as families have been on the journey up to stage four. This is kind of where we are at at the moment. But stage five represents a distinct path, a distinct step for mathematics. So there are some unique things specific to mathematics as Miss Matthews mentioned that we need to be cognizant of and break down for all of you so that we're all aware of what's going on. So the first of those is that unlike the other subjects, schools are given the flexibility in New South Wales to actually tailor mathematics syllabuses in stage five to suit the current learning needs and future intentions of their syllabus, both in their scope and in the depth of the, um, of the material going um, gone through in stage five. So that's quite unique. And I'll try to unpack that a little bit more in the next slide. Additionally, unlike other subjects in stage six, there are a significantly large amount of mathematics subject options in stage six. So in that year 11 and 12, the next step on the journey for our students. As you can see here in year 11, there are six options with no mathematics being one of them. And in, in year 12, there are, there are more, right? There are some extension subjects as well and a branching of the standard um, pathways. Now, it's probably worth mentioning, I should have mentioned this earlier, we've put all of this together in uh, what we hope is the interactive and useful website for you. So all of these graphics, I'll show you at the, um, as we go through the pre presentation, are in a website similar to the stage five curriculum website, which you can look at them in your, at, at your leisure. So K to 12, I really wanna illustrate the two key unique features of stage five. Now, just to get uh, a bit of a better understanding, I think this diagram is quite helpful. So again, we can see the stepping through of stage one, two, three, and four, where the students are up to at the moment, stage four. But as you can see, this structure is unique. This progression from 5.1, which is built upon, next step is 5.2, and then 5.3 builds upon that as well. So this is a very unique thing to mathematics in that schools are given the um, permission and the ability to decide how much content is covered to suit the needs of their students. Now, the misinterpretation that I alluded to is this concept that perhaps it's just 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3, and those dictate the three streams of students. So as I um, go through with you today, hopefully you can understand our approach to that being a bit different. Now, stage six follows, and as you can see, there are the color codes kinds of help show the pathways into those stage six subjects, which we'll cover a little bit later. But it's also worth noting um, that this is this 5.123 structure is kind of played out in the topics that we go through in stage five. So you can see again, the students, this is just taken from the syllabus. The students have gone through computation with integers, uh, fractions, decimals, and percentages in, in stage four. They, they may remember some checkpoints around it. But in stage five, there are a continual building of these skills like fractions, decimals, and percentages in various steps of content. And this is the same for other topics like measurement and um, geometry, where 
you have a stage four topic built upon layer by layer into stage 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Remembering to the left here that this is a unique thing that schools are able to only in mathematics decide to best suit their students how far along this progression um, the content is delivered. So that's a little bit of the syllabus structure. It's a lot to take in. This is meant to be the first introduction to it. By no means do I expect you to understand all of this perfectly at the end of this presentation. Again, all of that information is on the website, which I'll show you in a moment. So I hopefully I've unpacked that um, the, the syllabus intention a little bit, and hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now I'm actually going to skip this um, three stream step because how we've worked it at, at, at Inner Sydney High School is we really wanted to be aware of this um, issue because this issue actually informs this, this idea of the three streams because we do not want to lock students out of pathways. We want to keep the door open because you know, I can relate to my, my own story here, thinking of myself as a 13 year old, 14 year old, I'm not the same person um, as an adult that I was there. And to think that my decisions um, in my future were based on my performance as a year eight student um, and my thinking as a year, year eight student, it's quite an unfair and unreasonable thing to, to do. So we wanna make sure that we're very aware of the pathways for our students and how to best cater for those. So. I've got an example here, and this is just one example. There are many other examples on the website, which you can have a look at for UNSW or UTS. Um, we've just taken the University of Sydney as a relatively local university for us, um, as how they are structuring their university pathways around mathematics prerequisites. So it's really important to note everyone that stage five is what we're talking about today, but stage five impacts stage six. And stage six impacts pathways to universities. So you might have seen that on that, that diagram in the previous slide, but this is where the stage six um, impact into tertiary education, we really wanna make every, everyone aware of it and how that then feeds into stage five. So this prerequisite that I mentioned about the University of Sydney is one in which you need a band four, band five or band six result in this mathematics advance, which is a, stage six course I've shown you previously and you can again check out check on the, on the website but it's a specific course that students need to achieve a band four five six result and now most students um, get a 80 percent of students actually get a score of 70 or higher which is a band four score um, so the prerequisite is potentially not to that unattainable, but what is the thing we need to be really aware of is the availability and the ability to do this course. This being um, ready for this course is the thing that we're very cognizant about um, in terms of designing our pathways. So here's the point of keeping the door open, right? Such courses which have this prerequisite now at the University of Sydney, as, as our example, as I said, I've linked other things in the website you can have a check for are not necessarily doing a maths degree. It's not necessarily being a physics teacher like me. There are many, many other things which you might not think of like commerce, which actually you need to have that prerequisite for. Things like certain nursing, um, pharmacy, computer science, agriculture, um, nutrition, psychology. There's a lot of things that actually need this um, prerequisite for the University of Sydney. Now, at this point, the landscape is in tertiary is that I, I feel the, um, the prerequisites are actually probably going to increase rather than go the other way because they have been identified as um, tertiary students not being adequately prepared for mathematics at university. Um, so I do see the trend probably increasing rather than the other way. But this again is not meant to be a scare tactic or meant to say you really, you, you need to do maths advance. It, it's shaping what we're doing in stage five, because as the picture there shows, we really want to keep the door open. We really want to make sure that the 13, 14 year olds with us today don't get shut out of doing something that they might find a passion with when they're in year 11 or 12 or even later because of how we've structured our courses at the current point in time. So, um, I, I've been meaning to pass to Stuart actually before. Stuart, did you have anything to add um, so far about those two things uh, about keeping the door open or about the syllabus structure? Well, yes, uh, Nigel, hi everybody. Um, some of the viewers, uh, some of the parent viewers may be the uh, either the 
proud product or, or even the victim of the previous system where at the end of year eight, students were placed into either advanced or intermediate or standard. And that was almost a life-changing decision made by teachers. And in many schools, the parents had no input whatsoever. So I'm proud of what we're doing here of trying to inform the students that this, this is a bit of a watershed moment. And they are young, but we're just trying to make sure that everybody knows what is ahead of them. Thanks, yeah, Nigel. Thanks, thanks, Stuart. And as I said, all of this stuff will be on the website. You can take your time to digest it. It is a pretty, it is a pretty big meal to, to be um, looking at tonight. So that is this STEM pathway. So with those two things in mind, with the syllabus in mind and with the um, STEM pathways in mind and keeping the door open, now to this um, idea of the three streams and how we've done this instead of just that you know, what I think is analogous to lining the kids up in order or whatever order I as the head teacher mathematics think and just counting to 30 and putting them in a class. So we've devised um, three pathways that very much take into account the syllabus intention as well as the open door um, pathway idea. So I'm going to talk to you about those now, the three pathways. So the first one is called the Access All Areas Pathway and really proud of the name, the AAA Pathway because the intention of this is that it keeps the door open as long as possible for students. So this is the one that the majority of the students will be suited to and be placed on automatically. So in this one, and, and I've got some diagrams in a few slides to show you, students will cover everything in 5.1 and 5.2 and the most important relevant aspects of 5.3. Um, interestingly, this might be a bit of a um, too much information uh, an aside, but the New South Wales curriculum is the only one that has this 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 structure. And it actually, if not done correctly, lags behind some of the other states in terms of what will be achieved at the end of stage five. So students who might um, travel interstate, I know that's a bit of a weird thing to think about at the moment, to go to university. It's not uncommon to, to go to university in Queensland or Melbourne. It's, it's interesting to think about um, that just not being aware of the Australian curriculum is something that um, does happen in New South Wales, but we're designing it to make sure that it's up to Australian curriculum. And really importantly, it's well prepared for year 11 advanced. And if you remember a few slides ago, year 12 advanced, which um, feeds on from year 11 advanced is the one that is the, is the open door that we wanna keep open. Now, Stuart, is there anything I've forgotten about the AAA pathway? No, I like the way you pointed out that it basically this pathway is basically the equivalent of the Australian curriculum and in other states and territories, just about every student is placed on this pathway. Uh, they do have some additional topics at the end of year 10, which Nigel will talk about later. But uh, yes, we, we think that the majority of the students who are currently in year eight are capable of, of meeting the uh, expectations of this pathway. Um, yeah, thanks, Nigel. Yeah, and uh, just going back to that that second slide, you know, I chose that image purposely of Taylor making it. We've been so lucky to have the team that we have, including Stuart, including our maths faculty, to make sure that we can tailor this specifically to the needs of our um, students and making sure the pathways are open to us, to, to them. Now, the, the second pathway is what we would call, is what we do call the express pathway. So as the name suggests, it has to do with um, progressing rapidly through content. So it's not suited to everyone and it's not suited to talented maths, mathematics students um, sometimes. It's not necessarily a better course. It is just a faster course. So in this pathway, students really just make their way through 5.1, 5.2 and take the time in covering 5.3 topics, including some additional topics such as polynomials, functions, and logarithms, which are those stage um, six mathematics advanced things where students need to be really prepared for if they're gonna do things like extension. And it's for motivated students who are capable of succeeding. Um, it, it is through application and it's the students who are capable of um, going through things and understanding things quickly. 
So as I said, it's not necessarily a better pathway, but it's one in which it's just, it's a quicker, it's an express lane if, if you want to think about it that way. So it's suited for students who, if they are capable, it's definitely worth doing because it opens up more opportunities later on. So you may not be interested in architecture now, but you might find yourself as you mature, you know, really into architecture and then having done the express pathway, you'll be, re you'll be better suited to go on to um, those pathways at university and in, and in stage six leading up to it. So I'll discuss this a little bit more later in terms of the administration and the next steps, but students who um, are suited to this pathway will receive an email and will still be required to do an application just to, just to have that discussion with their mathematics teacher and make sure that it is the right fit for them because it is not meant for, to be for everyone. And students who are successful in math, sometimes, you know, me as a student, I needed a bit more time to rethink things and really apply things. Um, and it, I would probably not be necessarily suited to this express pathway. So students on this pathway will be very well prepared for year 11 advanced, which is the open door, but also for the next level of extension one. And as I said, the STEM degrees at university, like myself being a physics major, um, that's something that if I had that um, desire already, it's something, and I was capable of, of doing the, the content quicker, I would seriously be um, pushing myself to, to do this as a teacher, talking to myself um, as a student. Um, Stuart, did you have anything else you wanted to add about this pathway? Um, one of my uh, previous jobs, I was the project officer for the Mathematical Association of New South Wales and spent several days out at the careers, uh, HSC and Careers Expo at Moore Park and parents would come to me, parents of Year 10 students, half, halfway through Year 10, bitterly disappointed that they had their, their son or daughter had been denied this pathway without even knowing about it. There was no consultation. So I've been talking to Nigel all, the, all year about tonight, how we had to have this conversation with the parents and make it really clear because nobody wants to find out about this halfway through year 10. Yeah. 100%. Thanks, Nigel. And it's a lot to, to digest, right? I Sue and I have been talking about this for, for a while. So again, the website is there and the time is there for everyone to sit with this information. Now, the third pathway, the numerate citizen pathway, is one that provides um, revision and consol um, consolidation of the previous learning. Um, so for this, it's best suited for students who need that consolidation, um, and it does cover 5.1 and 5.2 and the most useful aspects of it, focusing on numeracy, which is most relevant to life beyond school. And again, students will be who are best suited for this pathway will, be, will receive an email from the school with some information about how to opt in and with all of these pathways, our math teachers will be talking to, um, to students about it and I'll be available to discuss it later. But we'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later in the, um, in the next steps stage. So by the end of year 10, the numerate citizens pathway, again, even with the numerate citizens pathway, we're still trying to keep the door open for things like mathematics standard or year 11 numeracy. And they'll be ready for a lot of um, numeracy tests that are more prevalent than you actually think. If someone wants to be a policeman, they do need to pass a numeracy test. And I remember back in my um, university days, actually tutoring a lot of people who were trying to pass the numeracy um, test for policing specifically. TAFE courses like carpentry and um, electrical work, again, there's actually a lot of numeracy tests. So again, this idea of tailor making something for students who uh, to best suit them, um, applies in this case as well, because we're actually tailor making the syllabus to fit um, this pathway to ensure students are best prepared for, for the future. So this is the, the, the third pathway. So anything to add with that one? No, um, it's really a matter of horses for courses. We, we really want students to be in the right place. Um, Nigel will talk about uh, changing pathways shortly. Um, but uh, in this case, we're, we're, we're building this pathway for students who are the genuine strugglers who've, who've been doing math since kindergarten and it's always been a struggle. And in this, in this pathway, they will have additional time to consolidate their prior learning as well as moving forward. Uh, but still, 
we're still keeping that door open for year 11 standard or the brand new, this is a brand new subject called year 11 numeracy that's only been uh, published officially this year. So thanks, Nigel. Yeah, and it's going back to that idea of high expectations. Like, I don't want anyone to think that this numerate citizen path pathway is not one of high expectations. This here is designed and is expected for students to show growth and attainment in this course, but it's one that is tailored better to their needs, as, as Stuart mentioned. So, some helpful diagrams. Everyone likes a good table. Um, so, just to compare a little bit of um, a little bit here, you can, I, I won't read these out. I know I made the cardinal teacher mistake of reading from the, the slide. So I'll, I'll stop that here. Um, I've spoken to these points about what things are prepared, uh, what they'll be prepared for and what things will be covered. Um, but I just really want to re reinforce that the most common path for the majority of our students will be this AAA pathway. And it's one that is tailor made to keep the door open for as long as possible. Now, the next steps I'll mention later, but again, these pathways are the abnormalities, right? Okay, so these ones are the ones where we've, um, we will tailor and speak to families and students about um, these different pathways. And this bottom diagram here illustrates nicely, I think, the different amount of content and range of content covered. So the AAA pathway will require some consolidation of prior learning to, to be able to do the stage five stuff. But as you can see, numerate citizens will take a little bit more time on that. And the express pathway is moving through things quickly. So we'll do basically no consolidation and move quickly through more um, topics. Another um, comparison in terms of backwards mapping things is again, thinking about year 12 and those um, prerequisites that I mentioned um, in, in, in terms of keeping the door open. As you can see how the um, subjects in year 12 relate to the subject in stage five. As I mentioned, stage five impacts stage six. So um, you can see that we've really, really kept the door open. This is the magic door, mathematics advanced. So we do wanna make sure that's um, open for the majority of students. As Stuart mentioned, we do wanna avoid the situation where we've, we don't interpret the syllabus properly. We don't plan, we don't tailor, and there's an ill-fitting suit where we have a lot of students not able to go through this doorway. So. Again, this is also on the website, so you can have a bit of a look through this um, later and I will be available um, as you digest all of this information in the coming weeks as well to talk about any further questions that you may have. So what we are doing, hopefully, um, just to summarize those three um, points that I was, I was um, discussing with everybody is keeping the door open, right? That's, that's kind of the phrase that we're um, that I think really encapsulates the tailor-made um, courses that we have. And here's our tailor-made um, suit um, for our students. And this is through thoughtful program design. And again, we're allowing the students who are capable of moving through material at a fast pace. And that's not everyone, but the students who are will have the opportunity to cover more content. And importantly, I'm really passionate about this one, supporting students who need to focus on foundational material for whatever reason, and to ensure that they're not forgotten and that they are actually best prepared for the future and they're not relegated to um, the third thought. Involving students and families in the process, that's why we're doing this. And as I said, we're available later to continue this conversation. And importantly, as Stuart alluded to, having an eight week trial period, because this is starting in um, 2022 in year nine, these pathways will counsel everybody on and have some draft pathways, but the opportunity to, to change is still there in term one because we want to make sure that everyone is on the right path. Anything uh, else you want to add to it before I show the website? No, nothing for me, Nigel. Go ahead. Great. So um, I haven't done um, published the website for everyone yet because the, um, the video that we're shooting now, I hope, is going to go right here. But the step one in terms of the next step is actually having a look at this at this website. So hopefully this all works. Um, you can tell me in the chat if it doesn't. I'll take you to the, um, the website. It looks something like this. Hopefully everyone can see that. Uh, your landing page will be here. And as I said, that's where our video for today would be because it's really meant to be in conjunction with this webinar. It is too much information to take just the video or just the website. So we want to do that in conjunction. So our key things that we've discussed are here. So they're up the top, but also you can read it kind of as a book, turning the page there. So our aims there, keeping the door open, 
all of that information about the STEM degree is really interesting um, references here about this idea, which I forgot to mention that um, there are bridging courses. I, I think Stuart will correct me that, that that term is not necessarily correct anymore, but if students don't do this prerequisite, there are ways of um, still accessing these courses in university, but, but as they, these um, references show, research has shown that the best preparation for students to do these courses is doing it in school, doing it with us in school and to be well prepared for it. So anyway, you can have a look at that in a little bit more detail, but bridging courses do are available, not ideal though. And the other examples of UNSW and UTS, if you do wanna have a look at the prerequisites and assume knowledge, Again, the unpacking of all of the um, slides that I've, I've had before, please take your time to read it. For bonus points, um, there is a very detailed example of progressions between stages if you do wanna have a look at that, but that is totally optional reading as it says. Again, there's more information here about um, things if, uh, if you want to, to read deeper, it is all really quite interesting. The stage five pathways, Stage five pathways are mentioned in, again in more detail here with all of these diagrams for you to have a look at. And the next steps I'll break down for you um, in a moment back in the PowerPoint. And lastly, the FAQs. Um, you may wanna have a brief look at these now if you, had, if you were thinking anything or, or saying anything out loud to your computer screen. Um, you can look at the FAQs later, but you may um, already have some of those questions. I don't see anything in the Q&A yet. Um, but I'm I am happy, obviously, to answer these as we go. So the FAQs are there, and I'll keep adding to those as I get feedback from the community. If there are questions that are popping a lot, that's the beauty of the website, I can update the website. I'll just draw your attention to this last one, where you can find more help. There is a school email down here, which you can click on, and, and it will give you to whatever email client you have, will get you to the, um, to the school email, where you can just put the heading in, um, Math pathways, and you'll be in contact with me, and we can move on from there. So, back to this idea of the next steps. Um, let's go back to this. Hopefully, everyone can see that. I put it in a bit of a, a different table here, just to just to think about this time. And again, this is on the website, but not in yellow. Um, term three, where we are at the moment. So next week, um, using a similar system, Edval Choice, which was the elective systems that Miss Kelso alluded to last week. Um, students will receive an email detailing the pathway appropriate to them. As I said, the majority of students will be put on the AAA pathway and will get an email telling them so. But the students identified by our mathematics faculty as being suited for the other two pathways will also receive a email with more information. Now with that, as I said, this is the very beginning of the conversation, if not an entree um, to, this, to this experience. Week nine and 10, teachers will actually be um, in this remote environment, calling students into, into meet now meetings during class time and discussing their suitability. So having that one-on-one -on -one conversation that we normally have in real life, but having that um, remotely. Now, they'll also be making phone calls during the PYP sessions because we have some flexibility around that. But the first point of call will be the mathematics sessions. And as I mentioned, I'll be available, similar again to what we did with electives. Families may remember that I was, um, or that Mr. Kazanis and the head teachers were available during um, Tuesday mornings within the year eight um, team to, uh, for families to jump on with their students and ask questions to the teachers. So I'll be recreating that for mathematics. Um, the students would have seen a post today. I've created a mathematics pathways um, channel and we'll be doing that from next Tuesday, every Tuesday. So if, um, if any families wanna jump in with the students and have a chat to me, I'll be available, but of course, the mathematics teachers know the students um, best, and that will be the first point of call. That might take a few weeks because there are sometimes 30 students in a, in a class, but again, I don't want anyone rushing out or stressing about this. We do have the time to, to really thoughtfully go through this. So the website is there for you to digest. We purposely are not doing the emails now because we really want everyone to understand the, um, the vision and the structure around what we're doing. Now, into term four, week two is the rough deadline we're gonna have for um, finalizing those express submissions. So the students who are suited for express will still need to fill out something, just um, addressing some questions about suitability as well for numerate citizens, there will be um, some, some forms to, to just ensure that students and families are aware of the suitability for that pathway. 
stay uh, week three to five next term. Um, the, fac the faculty will finalize things and you might get further communication from us about things. And we'll be looking to um, draft the classes at the end of the term. Again, this is not meant to be a point of stress. Um, this is just showing you our timeline. And within the holiday period, along with the electives and the other subjects, uh, Ms. Kelsa will publish the timetables to student portal. And I really wanna emphasize that there's this trial period, which is the time where, you know, if we have misplaced a student in Express or AAA or Numerate Citizen, there is that time built into the process to make sure that they find the right path. So I hope everyone's okay to be on this journey with us. It's not something as Stuart mentioned that we're just making the decision and doing it without consulting you. We're consulting you and students every path, every time along this um, path. And specifically, we have this, um, this time to really, really make sure, do a real life test and trial to see how students cope with the beginnings of each of those courses. So I'll finish off, I see my nutshell coming up with um, again, just a recap of hopefully what I've been able to communicate to you, our intention of what's best for our students and supporting their journey with those high expectations with keeping the door open for um, all future pathways for as long as possible. So I hope that makes sense. I do see a few questions in the Q&A and I think my next slide just says um, Q&A, but I might just stop talking there, Chris, and I will stop sharing my screen and we can go to the Q&A section. Thank you everyone for your attention. I know it was a, uh, a bit of a long one. And thank you, Nigel, for your presentation. I will just pass over to Robin before we start answering some of those Q&As just to talk about other questions that can potentially be answered also, if that's all right, Robin. Yes, well, Chris, I'm not quite sure if the other questions are there. It's one around um, the maths challenge, is that right? Yeah, correct. But also, as you mentioned at the start of this presentation, we're happy to answer, obviously, more importantly, about the mathematical pathways, but also if there have been any other questions along the way that still haven't been answered about stage five curriculum. So, Nigel, I'll throw the first question to you. Yeah. It is probably, it sits around this, but it doesn't actually sit directly with the pathway. It's just about the mathematical challenges that have taken place um, and making sure that uh, the trophies or letters, are they still, do they still intend on sending those out after uh, they have sat those um, mathematical competitions. Yes, absolutely. And um, feel free, anonymous attendee. I I'm not sure who you are. I think I see the question there as well um, for the student who, who is doing that. I know a few students have done those challenges, um, but I can definitely follow up. You know, that would be standard practice to make sure that recognition is got, but I'm not sure wh who, which student um, is doing that. But there is um, the Maths Explorers Club that our maths faculty run is, is, is very wholesome and very nice seeing all the kids doing those um, challenges um, on what used to be on Monday afternoons at school together. Um, so yes, that recognition will, will be coming as soon as it's available. All right, thanks Nigel. And I noticed, look, in the chat, because there are there haven't been as many questions as normal. I think it's because it's been so comprehensive and, and uh, Jake Let's does say that. say that this is brilliant. So thank you. And I imagine that that is probably a lot of the people that are participating tonight also feeling that they've been really well informed about these pathways. But we will uh, obviously still hand over if there are any other questions. Um, and Anonymous does say thank you. But like we said, uh, like Nigel said, if you can just reach out so we know who it is in particular, we yeah, can then personalise the response. Just shoot an email to the school, whether you be a, a parent or, or a student. Potentially, I would think that it might be a student there. Um, at the moment, currently, it's actually all open. There aren't any questions. Obviously, that website, when it is released, Nigel, um, you know, with this webinar in there, it's yeah. going to be a one-stop shop around mathematical pathways. And Stuart, some of the comments that you made from, you know, those that expert that you are in mathematics um, is really beneficial here because I think they can see how deeply, as a school, we have thought about this. Well, Again, I, I wrote a very, I wrote a very long and boring letter, and then Nigel. We waved his magic wand and created the website. So um, I'm very, I'm very glad he did that because the letter was a bit dry. I must admit. Thank you, Nigel. So speaking of the website, um, I have asked. I think some math teachers are, are lurking around in in the chat. Um, the video won't be ready yet because it takes some time to process on our end. Um, but if the math teachers can pop that um, website in there, thank you, uh, Mr. Walker. You feel free to start to explore that um, at your leisure at the end of the um, presentation. Um, 
but I will release that um, and make the students available for that and send an email out regarding that as well. But I do know that people um, will, will be a bit keen to get the conversation going. But again, if you feel like you need a break before your next website course, by all means, take your break. I do want to emphasize that this will be a slow process. Um, we don't want to just bombard you and expect you to understand um, everything now. Thank you, Nigel. Robin, I know that you probably have a bit of comment more broadly about Stage 5 curriculum and what we're offering at INSEED. Well, I think it's really important to say, I just want to acknowledge the great work by the mathematics team. I think it's so comprehensive and the fact that there were very few questions there. And when Chris, when you asked me about responding to questions, I have I kept on looking to think, were there going to be any questions? So I think it has been such a comprehensive overview about the mathematics pathways. And I think that's where the beauty, I suppose, of being here at Inner Sydney, that we are really starting from scratch and really reflecting on how we can deliver this information to be as clear as possible, not just for students, but for parents as well, and for parents and students to have that conversation about opening the doors. And I think that's really, really important. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, there is no clear distinction be, apart from mathematics. However, throughout our different courses, there will be extension opportunities in each of those course subjects. So please keep that in mind just to answer that question as well. And, and that will be taking place as our students move forward. Okay, thanks, Robin. So that's in reference to obviously extension in a course subject such as English. Uh, we are very fortunate. We have incredible faculties at the school. Um, but I don't see any other questions, which probably is testament, Stuart and Nigel, to the comprehensive nature and also the mathematics department. Um, I know that you have been in meetings for, for many weeks and months in the lead up to, to rolling this out. And it is something that we're very proud of. And Mark, also acknowledging, thank you very much for that incredible explanation. Um, no real questions at the moment in the panel. I, I would just add there that the uh, the mathematics teachers who I work with when I'm at the school every Thursday, I'm incredibly impressed that they're very determined to set the bar, the bar high rather than low, that they want their students to have a crack at the, the highest levels of maths in year 11 and 12. Uh, there's, a, there's an awful lot of negative things going on in other schools where students are being talked out of doing advanced and extension for all the wrong reasons. And then they, then they wind up at university and struggle to pass their first year courses because of their inadequate mathematical background. So we're really trying hard to avoid that by doing the right thing by the students from day one of year nine rather than waiting for a nasty shock halfway through first year of university. So yes, I've been really impressed. And uh, so um, yeah, the, the teachers will be having the conversations with the students. And I'm, I'm also incredibly impressed how well the teachers know their students. They, a myriad of they, support, Stuart, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I see Roberto's asked a question. I'm assuming, Roberto, it is in, uh, in reference to the mathematics pathway about acceleration offered in year 10 and I will hand that over to you Nigel obviously being year 10 being part of stage five maybe just unpacking that just a little bit further yeah I'm not quite sure um Roberto the 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 thought behind that whether you mean like a, a stage six acceleration um in year 10 at the moment that is that is not the plan our um our program is to get through all of that material as I showed in the in the diagrams um within that year 10 time it is and I, I'm sure Stuart has an opinion on this. It is very difficult to um, cover all of the 5.3 material in one year. But that being said, we are always responsive to um, student needs. And if students do present and we are confident in our teachers and our ability to um, assess, um, if students present as being exceptional and able to, to do that, um, we're always responsive to needs. But at the moment, the plan is for that uh, express thing to be the um, basically the it, it is an accelerated program because you're going through things at a much quicker rate um, than normal. All right, thank you, Nigel. And, and Roberto says you hit the nail on the head there, uh, so that's great. Uh, Zena, thank you as well for your feedback. We really do appreciate. I've, I've never been a, I've never been a fan of acceleration myself. Uh, it was forced upon me in one school, um, and I'm still not a fan. So. We did, we did discuss that, and as Nigel says, that may be discussed again, but right now we're trying to make sure that they are perfectly organised and prepared for Year 11 through the two years of Stage 5. All right. Thank you, Stuart. 
Um, so just another one from Anonymous. And Nigel, I will put this one to you again. Uh, will the recommended pathway be an extension pushed based on current previous levels of achievement? So for example, put the bar higher. Okay, so of course this has happened. My screens are blacked out at the moment. Uh, Chris, I can hear you. And in my tab, I can kind of see, do you mind repeating the question again? Yeah, no, not, not an issue at all. So Anonymous is just asking about the recommended pathway. I think it's about now as a school, we're obviously giving our recommendation for each student. But what they're asking is, is it a chance or an opportunity that if they have their level of attainment, if they would like to push themselves to the next level, let's say, for example, the suggestion for the school might be uh, the uh, numerate citizen pathway, if they could be pushed into the triple A, or if it's the recommendation from the school is the triple A, could they be looking oh, at the mean. express? Yes, sorry. The screens are back, everyone. I'm sure you're happy, happy to know that. I just um, kept talking until your screen came back, <laughs> Nigel. Um, yeah, so it is obviously based on what we know. Um, as a, as a math and science person, I'm very, very happy with, with using evidence. Um, but that doesn't mean that past, I don't know what the line of, past performance is past performance is an indication of future success. I think that's what, that's what all the super companies say. Why, Nigel? Um, so that's why we're really happy to have that flexibility uh, within the timetable. And, and thank you to Ms. Kelsa for, um, for, the, for, for helping design that, we, where we have that eight week um, period at the end. So the the eight week period at the beginning of next year to, to really make sure students are in, on, the, in the, on the right path. And that's why um, this counseling that the mathematics faculty will be doing with um, students and I'll be available during those Tuesdays to have that chat if you wanna use um, um, as a meet now um, in, in the teams. Um, that's, that's why we have that counseling service. And also, yeah, I think I'm, I'm repeating myself and having that um, first few weeks to, to test it out. But we, we are basing it on the evidence that we do have. And, yep. and I think it's and important. We're, we're avoiding, as Nigel said, we're not doing what other schools do, which is line them all up according to the marks they got during year eight and drawing a line and saying, that's it, that's your pathway. We're not, we're not doing that. We know that students' performance, performances fluctuate and change and there's other things happening in their lives. So we are treating every student as an individual case, very much so. And I think, you know, Stuart and Nigel, it's really testament to obviously the myriad of support, even for students that aren't here today with us, because obviously there's another reason they might be catching this at a later stage. This yeah. is not the only form of support that they are provided. Look, as it looks like the, the Q&A is coming a bit to an end, we obviously will keep it open, um, but we will be passing over shortly to Miss Matthews for the closing remarks um, as we finish this fantastic webinar, but well done everyone. And thank you to all the manners and, and politeness in the community for acknowledging the hard work of the, the maths department, as well as uh, the head teacher and as a critical friend, you, Stuart. Well, Mr. Kazanis, I'm not quite sure there's anything more to say now, apart no. from thank you so much for being with us tonight. I think it's important during the fact of having a lockdown situation for our students, there's even more reason why there needs to be a conversation around pathways in, um, in stage five. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. As you would be aware, we have our, um, our Instant Archies um, celebration on Tuesday afternoon at 5 p.m. And following, we have our return to school uh, presentation next Thursday at 6 p.m. for all families. So hopefully we'll see you online then. Thank you once again, a fantastic presentation. You should be very proud. Thank you all, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.